In this video, I am going to show you um, about shadows and light and how photographers see both shadow and light in the world. If I was going to ask you to make a list of things in this room, you would probably say, oh, there's about 17 chairs and desks. There's a bookcase in the back and an open bookcase over here. There's two globes and a whiteboard, a mini whiteboard and a uh, bulletin board over here. And you'd make a list of everything that was in the room. You probably would not include, oh, and there's a shadow here and some shadows on the ground and the light is reflecting off of the waxed floor um, and those kind of things. We generally, when we think of objects, we think of the actual objects themselves and we do not think of shadows or beams of light or reflections of light as actual objects. However, in a photograph, shadows can have visual weight. They can become an object and be just as important as any other object. They can even give us more information about what's going on. So if we look at the shadow of the spoon, it's giving us the information that this spoon in the middle is rounded. And if we go over here, these shadows have just as much a visual weight are just as important as the woman. And they provide repetition and line and make the image much more interesting. Light can also have visual weight, not just shadows. Um, so if we see these beams of light on the background here, or I think there must be some kind of a glass vase or something here where this light is going through and being modified, or even in this picture, which is a very odd picture of these two people. It's a photo by Gary Winogrand. But having these uh, blazes of light on the wall behind them help leads our eye to their faces. So these, um, this light on these walls can be just as important as any other object. Shadows can also reference objects that are outside of the frame. So if there was no shadow here and we saw this hanging down, we wouldn't quite be sure what it was. But seeing this shadow, we understand, oh, there's probably a palm tree just outside of the frame. Shadows can also give us more information. If we look at this image down here, we first see this sliver of darkness right here, and we're not quite sure what it is. However, once we see the shadows on the ground, we understand that these are crosses, and perhaps this is a graveyard. Light can show us texture, so especially directional light, strong light coming from one direction instead of overhead, but rather from the side, can define the edges and folds and textures of objects. If this picture was taken with very even diffused light from above, it would just kind of be white on white. But with this strong contrasty light from the side, we see all of the wrinkles. And it kind of reminds me of looking at those beautiful Greek and Roman sculptures that have the very defined folds in the togas and the clothing. Light can define the structure and the architecture of objects. So here we see the edges of these steps because the light is hitting it. Light can show details. So if you look at this picture, what do you think happened right before this picture? If we look at this street and the texture of the street, we can see that it's wet. And so we can understand that it probably rained right before this picture was taken. Light can also be a focal point, bringing our eyes to a specific part of the photograph first. Because the brightest area and a shaft of light is hitting this boy's face, that's where we look first. And probably we might look down at the flag second before we go up and look at other faces in this picture. Um, backlighting can be very dramatic. If your source of light 
is behind your subject. So here the light was probably, the sun was probably down here. Um, you can meter your camera. There'll be another video explaining how, but you can meter your camera on the background and anything that's in front of it will turn into a silhouette. Now, if you make a backlit image, make sure that whatever you are turning into a silhouette has an interesting shape. A backlit image of a lump of a rock is going to be pretty boring. But if you have some interesting action or interesting shapes, then a silhouette can be really beautiful. So using your light meter to create a silhouette, there will be another video um, about it, but very quickly, you point your camera the middle of your lens at that light area in the back and press the shutter button down halfway on your camera. Then if you need to focus and recompose to follow the rule of thirds, um, you can move your camera just slightly, a couple millimeters to one side or another. You don't wanna move it forward or back, um, but you can move it slightly to one side or another to recompose. Then you press the button down all the way. So your assignment uh, is to take two photos where light or shadows are the most important thing. I want to look at these photos and say, wow, that's a photo that's really about light. Or wow, that's a photo that's really about shadows, where light or shadows are the most important thing. Not a photo where there's a little bit of light or a little bit of shadow in the corner and it's not very noticeable. It should be the most important thing in the photo. Please do not use a flash for this assignment. The best light source to use is the sun. If you really need to take the pictures in your house at night or someplace, you can take a very strong light, even the lampshade off of a lamp or one of those work lamps that you might have, those kind of silver dishes with a bare bulb in it that you might have in your garage or your basement. And you can use that to make really strong shadows. But the shadows should be of something that are in an interesting shape. Again, you don't want a lump uh, that we don't really know what it is. Like a, a shadow of a potato is pretty boring. Um, but a shadow of a potted plant that has all this positive and negative space might be really beautiful. If you have any questions, please let me know. That's what I'm here for.